Hey Kyle Codes here. So we're going to be going over regexes or regular expressions. And they're pretty easy to use in PHP. At first sight, they might look really, really complicated, but they're actually pretty easy. So in this tutorial, this will be part one of two. This is just going to be an introduction. And I'm not going to show you how to use it with PHP in this one that will come in the latter tutorial. So, let's start off with a simple, uh, let's just make sure that someone inputs their age correctly. So, personally, I don't know that many people that are 100 years or older, and I don't know really anyone who, well, you can't have zero digits, so... We're going to have our string length be 1 to 2. Now, we want it to start and end with a number. So, I'm going to put the caret or shift 6 and shift 4 for the dollar sign. And in between this is going to be all of our regu regular expression. So, this means the caret means start with, and this means end with. So I'm going to put in over here, um, put in 10, because 10 is a big year for those 9-year-olds. Okay, so, this is really easy. You just put a square bracket and close the square bracket, and you put 0 hyphen 9, so everything 0 through 9, and then it's pretty easy to specify the length. You open up a curly bracket, and if I wanted to make it be one or more or one or more in length, I would just put a one comma and close the curly brace. This would mean one to two point one four seven billion would be acceptable because around two point one four seven billion is the cutoff for thirty two bit integers. Okay, so we want ours to be a max of two digits and a minimum of one. So, what I'm going to do is just put a two here. And now, I'm just going to click over here. Oh, look, first match, 100. So if I put in 102, and then I click here, it's not going to match anything because it's not two characters, one or two characters long. However, if I click this click test. Oh, first match is one. Okay, so pretty basic. Let's try doing something with letters in it. So we are going to do a name. So it's going, well, it's not going, yeah, okay. It's going to start with one of these characters. Lowercase a through z, uppercase a through z. It's not going to have a number, but it could have a hyphen, so backslash hyphen, and it could have an apostrophe. I'm not sure if that's an escape character. We'll find out. So, the length, let's make it a minimum of two, or maybe a minimum of one. Maybe they're putting in a nickname or something. Um, and a maximum of 35. And we're going to end it. So let's put in a name. Like if someone had the name Deshaun. I don't know. I'm just thinking, yep, it will match it. But also I think we should include spaces. So that's a backspan backslash and a space so Deshaun ooh what about junior interesting combination so we need a backslash and a period Deshaun junior okay so that will ma match their first name although you could argue it would be like Deshaun Smith junior or whatever the third the fourth the fifth um this is just basic. You can change it up however you want. 
So now let's move on to classifying or making sure that a string is a URL. So there's two types of protocol normally for um, just a basic web page and there's a secure and an unsecure. So I'm going to put in this HTTP and normally you'll see two of these up down lines when you're programming Java, PHP, C Sharp, etc. That means or. We're just going to use one. And that's how it works with regular expressions. And then we're going to close this so it's either starting with oops, forgot the starting with starting with HTTP or HTTPS for the protocol a colon and since a forward slash is a an escape character we have to put a backslash forward slash backslash forward slash here I'll give you an example Google, oops, not Google google.com okay so if you remember from our last part there can be A through Z possibly an uppercase A through Z but it won't really matter um, the only reason why this would happen is if someone was pasting I don't know an uppercase URL uppercase URLs don't change unless it's the file or the folder after the URL and possibly the subdomain so we're just going to put this in here for now and say that it can have a period in here. It also can have the numbers 0 through 9, a period. It can also have a hyphen. I can't think of any good popular websites with a hyphen in them, um, but it could be google.com. Um, that's not a real website, obviously. So. Okay, so you can already see that it matched that first G. Now, if we add an asterisk, that means, I think it means one or more. And there we go. Match that whole string. But, what we want to do is we also want to match this right here, backslash, period. So we're going to say dot com or dot, um, dot us dot net dot org so we're gonna put in a through z um, yeah that's all we need and then we're gonna put in a length of two to six depending on whatever it is so now if I change this up it still works all right all right now I don't have a good feeling about this one of course right okay so this hmm, we're just gonna leave that end character out for this one um, then you can have tons of folders and everything else after this so we're gonna put um, a new hmm, I'm trying to think if there's a better way to use the periods in the URL so that way it doesn't overlap um, we're just going to do a backslash forward slash and that will just put this yep google.com um, yeah so I'm going to put a question mark here saying that it can have it but it isn't required so even if I do this it's still going to show up um, yeah. So, I know there's better examples out there, but this is just really basic. Um, I'm really hoping you guys understand this. And I'll be showing you guys how to do a real-world application the next time you see me. So, thanks for watching, and leave a comment if you have a question. Thanks. Bye.